Was the serpent in Genesis defeated by Jesus? Book number one of the False Fulfillment Citation Series available at www.amazon.com in paperback and Kindle formats. Some background information on the word Satan or Satan. You might hear some people say Satan or Satan. You might hear me say Satan or Satan. It's all in reference to the same entity. Strong 7854. Adversary, withstand. From Satan, an opponent. Example, 1 Samuel 29 and 4. And the princes of the Philistines were wroth with him. And the princes of the Philistines said to him, Make this fellow return, that he may go again to his place, which you have appointed him, and let him not go down with us to battle, lest in the battle he be an adversary to us. 1 Kings 11 and 14. And the Lord stirred up an adversary to Solomon, Hadad the Edomite. He was of the king's seed in Edom. So we see the Philistines referring to David that he might be an adversary to us. And the Most High stirred up an adversary to Solomon. So if we continue with 7854, Satan or Satan, if we go on to the 7853, because it says C Hebrew, Satan, and 7854, again, we got an adversary, resist, to attack, accuse. So Psalm 7113 says, let those who are adversaries of my soul, Zechariah 3 and 1, at his right hand to accuse him. So we see so far, the Most High is stirring up Satans against Solomon. David is called a Satan because he would be an adversary to the Philistines. And the psalmist says, let those who are adversaries of my soul, Zechariah 3 and 1, at his right hand to accuse him. All these words stem from Satan, 7854 and 7853 in the Strong's. We have another similar word, sitna, 7855 in the Strong's, with the same root of the word, which means accusation from Satan, opposition, by letter, accusation. We see in Ezra 4 and 6, they wrote an accusation against. So we see a shin, a tet, and a noon for the root of this word. In the New Testament, again, we have the word, the accuser, 4567. Satanus, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, Satan or Satan. Is the Satan the physical serpent in the garden or is the serpent or the Nakash an animal? Genesis 3 and 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. We see Hanakash 5175 in the Strong's. This is the serpent, Genesis 3 and 1. It says it was more subtle than any beast of the field, Genesis 2 and 19. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Adam named the serpent Nakash. Why didn't he name it Satan? For all who subscribe to the Apocrypha, if we go into the books of Enoch, book one and book two, there's an Ethiopic version and a Slavonic version. The Ethiopic book of Enoch, page 23, Shemihaza was the chief. Page 89, Gadriel, he led Eve astray. First Enoch 54 and 6, they became servants of Satan and led astray those who dwell upon the dry ground. So we see in book one of Enoch from Nicholsburg and Vandercom, Gadriel, he led Eve astray, but also it says they became servants of Satan. Now the watchers of Satanel in the fallen angels traditions in the second Slavonic Enoch, page two, 
The description in the Slavonic Apocalypse is striking in that, in contrast to the classic Enochic account, the leadership over the fallen watchers is ascribed not to Shemiaza or Asao, but to Satanael. Second Enoch 18 and 3, these are the watchers, or the Grigori, who turned aside from the Lord 200 myriads together with their prince Satanael. So we see a difference in the leadership from Shemihaza to Satan, depending on which book or what version you read. And also in the same book in 1st Enoch, we see Shemihaza was the chief, but it also in the same book tells us they became servants of Satan. But it was Gadriel who led Eve astray. So if we continue with this beast of the field concept concerning the Nakash, Genesis 3, 14 and 15 tells us, So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. And on your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. 2416 in the Strong's tells us wild beast. 929 in the Strong's tells us again, a beast. He's not referred to as an angel, but a beast of the field. On your belly shall you go. So if the Nakash or the physical serpent in the garden lost its legs, we should not see it walking. Job 1 and 7, and the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. First Thessalonians 2 and 18, therefore we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again, but Satan hindered us. 2 Corinthians 11 and 14. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Revelation 12 and 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. So a snake that was cursed and his legs taken away, walks to and fro in the earth, can appear before God in heaven, hinders Paul on missions, turns into an angel of light, and fights with archangels. If it was cursed more than any of the beasts of the field, how did it get all these remarkable abilities? So we see there is an influence of the Satan, and he cannot actually be the physical serpent. We have an example in 1 Chronicles 21 and 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. It does not say that Nakash provoked David. It actually says Satan. We see the same language in Job 2 and 3. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil, and he still maintains his integrity. Though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. We see the word 54 and 96 in the Strong's sooth to incite a lore or instigate. So we do see an influence of the Satan, but it itself, or he himself, is not the Nakash. The serpents in the wilderness are not rebellious. They are commanded. Are these serpents the Satan? What happened to that specific Nakash in Genesis chapter 3? Numbers 21 and 6. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. And they bid the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Amos 9 and 3. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out there. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, there will I command the serpent, and he shall bite them. 
Physical snakes are commanded by God to attack. Are these the Satan or the same type of serpent cursed in the garden? We don't see that same Nakash mentioned anywhere else specifically. Is the Satan thrown into the lake of fire or does the serpent stay around and continue to eat dust as we read in Genesis 3, Isaiah 11 and 8? And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp and the winged child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den, Isaiah 65 and 25. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and the dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. Micah 7 and 17. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. Revelation 20 and 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So is this the same Nakash that was cursed in the garden? Does Satan or the Nakash get on the ark with the rest of the animals, or did he or it die in the flood? Genesis 3.1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Genesis 6 and 12. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way on the earth. Genesis 6 and 19. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female. We don't read about the female counterpart to the Satan or the Nakash or the serpent in Genesis. So were they brought unto the ark? Is there a covenant with the Nakash or Satan? Genesis 9, 9 through 10. And I behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you and with every living creature that is with you of the fowl of the cattle and of every beast of the earth with you from all that go out of the ark to every beast on the earth remember genesis 3 and 1 now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the lord god had made so if the satan or the nakash is a beast of the field was it given this covenant that was given in genesis 9 9 through 10. Who is called a dragon before revelation is written? Ezekiel 29 and 3. Speak and say, thus said the Lord God, behold, I am against the Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which have said, my river is mine own and I have made it for myself. A king of Egypt is referred to as the great dragon. Revelation 12 and 9. And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him so we see pharaoh king of egypt was described as a great dragon long before revelation assigned this title to the devil who deals with satan in the new testament if genesis 3 is supposed to be about Jesus and Satan. What actually happens in the New Testament? Romans 16 and 20, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. So if God is going to crush Satan under your feet, why doesn't it say Jesus will do this? Well, some say, well, Jesus is God. But if Jesus is God, is he tempted by Satan? James 1 and 13, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. So if God cannot be tempted and he doesn't tempt anyone, then what's going on with the Satan and Jesus? Because it says Jesus was led by the spirit to be tempted in the wilderness. We see in Luke 4, 13, 
And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. So if Jesus is God, who's tempting him? Mark 1 and 13, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan. Again, if God is Jesus, how was he being tempted by Satan? Hebrews 2 and 18, for in that he himself has suffered being tempted. How can God be tempted if James just said, this is not possible? And again, since we just showed Jesus is not God because he was actually tempted, what does he do to Satan in the New Testament? So if we stay here for a second, does God tempt himself? Matthew 4 and 1. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Whose spirit led Jesus to be tempted? James 1 and 13 again. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. So whose spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted? Was that his spirit or was that the spirit of God? And if he is God, that had to be his spirit tempting himself or leading himself to be tempted. Now, we know Jesus was hungry after tempting himself. Luke 4 and 2, being 40 days tempted of the devil, in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered, Psalm 50 and 12. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine in the fullness thereof. So we see the Most High telling us if he was hungry, he would not tell us. But we clearly read in Luke, after being tempted, Jesus was hungry. So again, who tempted him? Whose spirit led him to be tempted? And why is he hungry and telling us if God says if he was hungry, he would not tell us? We will continue. Who deals with Satan in the New Testament? Revelation 12, 7 and 8. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Michael and his angels so is Jesus one of the angels of Michael? Did he help Michael? Revelation 20, 1 through 3. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So again, we see an angel doing this. It does not say Jesus is doing this. Jesus is not an angel. He does nothing to the Satan as we've seen Michael and another angel do in the book of Revelation. If we go back to Daniel 12 and 1, it says, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. Not Jesus. Michael. Revelation 7 and 11. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God. So if Jesus is an angel, and he is God, is he worshipping himself? Hebrews 1 and 6, and again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. So if Jesus is an angel, is the angels worshiping him as an angel? Revelation 22, 8 through 9, and I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant 
and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. It doesn't say worship Jesus. It says worship God. And this is an angel. What does Jesus do when he encounters the Satan? Matthew 4 and 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So again, a spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. But James 1 and 13 says, God cannot be tempted by evil and he doesn't tempt anyone. So whose spirit led Jesus to be tempted? Matthew 4 and 5. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. So, so far, Jesus is not crushing his head. He's just being tempted. Matthew 4 and 8. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Again, Jesus is not doing any crushing of the head. He's just being tempted and being asked to worship the Satan. Matthew 4 and 11. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. So if Jesus is an angel, then he came to minister to himself or are these just other angels? We do not see anything done to the Satan here. He just leaves on his own. What was Jesus supposed to do to the devil? Genesis 3.15, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Jesus only has a conversation with Satan, but it's Michael who fights with him and throws him from heaven. Luke 10, 18, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Remember in Revelation 12, war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. If Michael threw Satan out of heaven and down to earth, how was he cast out from the earth according to John 12 and 31? Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Was he cast out from heaven or cast out from the earth? After Jesus dies, we still die. We still sin. The Satan still rules. According to the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believeth not, Acts 26 and 18, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan. 1 Corinthians 7 and 5, do not deprive one another except when you agree for a time to devote yourselves to prayer, then come together again. Otherwise, Satan may tempt you because of your lack of self-control. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So we see the Satan being called a god of this world. He has power. He still tempts and he has signs and lying wonders. So when exactly did Jesus do anything to the Satan? The Satan is active before and after Jesus. The New Testament tells us in 1 John 3 and 8, He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. I don't see Jesus destroying any works of the devil though. 1 Thessalonians 2 and 18, Therefore we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again, but Satan hindered us. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So he still has devices. He's still hindering people. And Jesus has not destroyed his works. So according to the New Testament, the ruler of this world has been judged, but is still free. John 16, 11, in concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. Well, when was the judgment? Because a lot of other things are supposed to happen when the judgment comes, right? Luke 22 and 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Acts 5 and 3. 
But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? So we see the Satan very active after Jesus was executed. Satan is continually operating among Christians after the death of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 12 and 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. 1 Timothy 5 and 15. For some have already turned aside after Satan. Luke 9 and 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Now, this word devil is often translated as demon. But according to the New Testament, the Satan is the ruler of evil and demons and devils. So if the disciples have power and authority over all devils, then how is the Satan hindering Paul and tempting people? Right? Revelation 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. How can he cast you into prison if Luke 9 and 1 says you have power and authority over all devils? So according to Christians, the reason Jesus has not done anything to the Satan is because he will do this when he returns in his second coming. Well, Jesus is finished with his work. John 17 and 4. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. This word in the Greek is 5048 in the strong saying, having completed 2041, ergon. This is the word for work or a task, employment, a deed, action. So he has finished the work which he claims God gave him to do. John 19, 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished. Knowing that all things were now accomplished. John 19 and 30. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. If it is finished, he has finished the work. And knowing all things were now accomplished doesn't mean he's done. I don't know how else to say it. He said he's finished with his work. And in John 17 and 4, he hadn't even been executed yet. And he said he was finished. Who is responsible for evil? Was it the Nakash in the garden? Or is it based on the decisions we make? Deuteronomy 30 and 15. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. This is what the Most High tells us. No mention of a Satan or a Nakash here. Isaiah 3 and 9. The look on their countenance witnesses against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to their soul, for they have brought evil upon themselves. Not the Satan. They have brought evil upon themselves because of decisions that they made. Jeremiah 49, 37. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before them that seek their life, and I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger, saith the Lord, and I will send the sword after them till I have consumed them. No mention of a Nakash or a Satan. It says, I will bring evil upon them. Why? Decisions. Isaiah 45, 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Why? Because he has set life and good and death and evil before you. Choose wisely. If we continue dealing with who is responsible for evil, let's see what the New Testament says. Acts 10 and 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, 
who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. It says he was healing those who were oppressed of the devil. Exodus 15 and 26 says, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. So if God is the one who brought diseases upon the Egyptians, why doesn't it say the devil did it? How did the devil oppress the people in the New Testament? But God is the one putting diseases on people in the Tanakh. Deuteronomy 7.15 And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but I will lay them upon all that hate thee. I will lay upon them. I will lay upon them. These diseases from those that hate you. Deuteronomy 28 60. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt. He will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt. Second Chronicles 21 and 18. And after all this, the Lord smote him in his bowels with an incurable disease. The Lord smote him in his bowels with an incurable disease. So, how is the devil oppressing people in the New Testament when in the Tanakh it says it's from the Lord? Evil spirits and deception. 1 Samuel 16, 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. It doesn't say Satan troubled him. It says an evil spirit from the Lord. Or does the Satan work for the Most High? 1 Kings 22 and 23. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. Didn't Jesus say the Satan is the father of the lies and has been lying since the beginning? But we see right here. Behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. Lamentations 3 and 38. Out of the mouth of the Most High doth not there proceed evil and good? Ezekiel 14, 9. And if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. And I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people, Israel. We don't see the Satan in any of these verses or the Nakash. We see the Satan has a completely different role in the Tanakh. He cannot do anything without permission and he is given power by God. He is not rebelling in what he does to Job, as we can see. In Job 1, 6-12. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. So we see the Most High giving power to the Satan to do to Job what he wills. But he is not rebelling when he does this.
The Satan is a prosecutor. He brings charges. And the most I says, you incited me against him, meaning I make the final decision, but you did bring these charges against him. Job 2 and 3. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil, and still he holds fast to his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause. So we see the Satan had brought charges against Job. Zechariah 3, 1 through 4. Then he showed me Yeshua or Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Meaning it was in the fire, but it was taken out and shown mercy. Why? It says, now Joshua or Yeshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel, meaning he did something wrong. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. Now he's being shown mercy or plucked from the fire. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. So the Satan had a charge, but he was rebuked because the Mosai says, I'm going to show him mercy. His iniquity was removed from him. And he didn't have to bring the sacrifice. He was just given mercy. Psalm 109, 6 through 7. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. So we see the Satan is at somebody's right hand. To do what? To accuse. Then it says, when he shall be judged, meaning... The Satan brought charges against this person in court, and now the Mosai has to decide what to do when he judges him. This is the role of the Satan as a prosecutor. As an adversary, we see an angel of the Lord being an adversary or a la Satan or withstanding someone on their way to do something perverse. Numbers 22 and 22. But God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as his adversary. This word is adversary 7854 with Stan, Satan. Numbers 22 and 32. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out to oppose you because your way is perverse before me. So how is his way perverse before me? or the Satan, or this angel of the Lord, if every time we see the word Satan, it's supposed to be someone in rebelling to the Most High. We see it says, because your way was contrary to me in the NAS. So an angel of the Lord came out to withstand someone because their way was perverse before this angel of the Lord. We all know the phrase, the devil made me do it. I showed earlier, the Satan does influence. First Chronicles 21 and 1 also tells us, and Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. So he provokes. Second Samuel 24 and 1. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel and he moved David against them to say, go number Israel and Judah. So just like in Numbers 22, it says the anger of the Lord was kindled and then comes the Satan to do something. Isaiah 65 and 12. Therefore, I will number you for the sword and you shall all bow down to the slaughter because when I called, you did not answer. When I spoke, you did not hear, but did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I do not delight. So again, we see the evil comes from choices and being provoked. This is the test that we see in Exodus 20 and 20 in Job 7, 17 through 18. The Most High does test us. Genesis 22 and 1. Jeremiah 18 and 18 says, If the nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, 
I will relent on the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. So although the Satan can provoke, if you turn from your evil, the Most High will not punish you. Choices. We see the Satan can provoke, incite, and bring charges, but we still have a choice to make. Even in the garden with the Nakash, there was a choice to eat from the tree. Genesis 4, 6-7 also tells us, So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it, meaning you can beat this. Deuteronomy 30 and 15, See, I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil. Again, a choice. Psalm 25 and 12. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. So we see if you choose the fear of the Most High, then you will be taught. 2 Samuel 22 and 27. You are pure to those who are pure, but hostile to those who are wicked. Again, depending on your choice, this is how the Most High will react to you. Tests and temptation. Exodus 20 and 20. And Moses said to the people, do not fear, for God has come to test you, that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. So we see a test is presented right after the commandments are given in Exodus 20. Job 7, 17 through 18. What is man that you should exalt him, that you should set your heart on him, that you should visit him every morning and test him every moment? So we see every moment is a test. Psalm 79. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteous God tests the hearts and minds. Jeremiah 11 and 20, but O Lord of hosts, you who judge righteously, testing the mind and the heart, let me see your vengeance on them, for to you I have revealed my cause. So we see the tests are from the Most High, and we have choices to make. More on the tests and temptations. James 1 and 13 again tells us, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. So again, I ask in Matthew 4 and 1, then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So who led Jesus to be tempted by the devil? What spirit was that? Genesis 22 and 1. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. We see in the Hebrew 52:54, Nasa to test, try, adventure, assay, prove, tempt, try. So who tested or tempted Jesus in the wilderness? And who tested or tempted Abraham if it was not the Most High? Because it clearly tells us he tests us, as I read in the previous slide. So now that we see that the tests and the temptations are brought upon man by the Most High, and that the Satan is a prosecutor, he's the one bringing charges against people, but he is not the sole source of evil or any of the problems in the world. It is based on our choices that we make. Now we're going to see verses applied to the Satan that are actually about kings or men. Ezekiel 28 is not about the Satan. Ezekiel 28 1. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, Thus said the Lord God. The prince of Tyre. Is the one addressed in Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28, 11 through 13. Moreover, 
the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre. Again, the king of Tyre is addressed. So now we can see when you read something in context, you can place what is going on, who is being spoken to, who is being spoken about, and it says, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre. Now, it could have easily said, say to the Satan, but it doesn't. We have another verse or chapter in the Tanakh that is applied to the Satan. But again, reading in context, you can see what's really going on. Isaiah 14 is not about the Satan. Isaiah 14 and 3. It shall come to pass in the day that the Lord gives you rest from your sorrow and from your fear and the hard bondage in which you were made to serve, that you will take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, the king of Babylon, your hard bondage. Who went to Babylon and who served the king of Babylon? Or did anybody go to bondage and serve the Satan or the Nakash? Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms? Isaiah 14 addresses a man. Isaiah 14, 16. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms? Who is this talking about? Ezekiel 29 and 19. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, surely I will give the land of Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He shall take away her wealth, carry off her spoil and remove her pillage. And that will be the wages for his army. Ezekiel 26 and 7. For thus says the Lord God, behold, I will bring against Tyre from the north Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, king of kings with horses, with chariots and with horsemen and an army with many people. So how can the king Tyre in Ezekiel be the Satan? And how can the king of Babylon in Isaiah 14 be the Satan if the king of Babylon is going to attack the king of Tyre? Jeremiah 27 and 8. And it shall be that the nation and kingdom which will not serve Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and which will not put its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation I will punish, says the Lord, with the sword, the famine, and the pestilence, until I have consumed them by his hand. So this is the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, the king of Babylon not the Satan, and he's named Nebuchadnezzar. The reign of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, Jeremiah 27, 5 through 7. I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are on the ground, which would include the Nakash, by my great power and by my outstretched arm and have given it to whom it seemed proper to me. And now I have given all of these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, the man who made the earth to tremble and shook kingdoms, like I read in the previous slide. My servant and the beast of the field, I have also given him to serve him. So all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son. This is describing the reign of the king of Babylon, and this is why he was able to attack Tyre. So now that we see the king of Babylon is Nebuchadnezzar and his reign went through him and his sons, what's going on in Isaiah 14? How are you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. This is the famous Isaiah 14 and 12. But you notice it says, you who weaken the nations. I just showed you he had a reign from him and his sons that all the kingdoms had to serve him. Verse 13, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. 
I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? This is referring to the king of Babylon. We see Nebuchadnezzar had a problem with pride. Isaiah 14 and 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. We see this arrogance is addressed in Daniel 4, verse 29 through 32. At the end of the 12 months, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke saying, is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty. While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you and they shall drive you from men and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen and seven times shall pass over you until you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. So if Nebuchadnezzar is the king of Babylon, and he's the one addressed in Isaiah 14, he cannot be the Satan. And again, it clearly says, the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. So if in the New Testament, when Satan is addressed as the God or the ruler of this world, it would mean that it was given to him by the Most High, because it says he rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. The Satan did not rebel to get this position, according to the New Testament, if you follow that book. So who or what is Lucifer in Isaiah 14? Is it the king of Babylon? Is it the Satan? 1966 in the Strong's says Lucifer, a shining one. The AMPC Bible says, How have you fallen from heaven, O light bringer and day star, son of the morning? How you have been cut down to the ground, you who weaken and lay low the nations, O blasphemous satanic king of Babylon. So this translation describes this person as a satanic king of Babylon but it's still the king of Babylon. We know that the Satan can influence, but this is not the Satan it's speaking about. The BRG says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? We know who the person was who weakened the nations, CSB shining morning star how you have fallen from the heavens you destroyer of nations you have been cut down to the ground the ceb how you fallen from heaven morning star son of dawn you are cut down to earth helpless on your back cjb how did you come to fall from the heavens morning star son of the dawn how did you come to be cut to the ground? Conqueror of nations. I showed the king of Babylon was given the position that all nations would serve him. That's how he conquered the nations. So who is the morning star? Second Peter 1 and 19. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed, as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. So if the Satan is the morning star, is the New Testament telling you that he is going to rise in your hearts? Revelation 22 and 16, I, Jesus, 
have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. 2986 in the Strong's, Lampros, shining, magnificent, bright, splendid, Strong's exhaustive concordance. Lucifer from Halal in the sense of brightness, the morning star. Lucifer. So again, Isaiah 14, 12 tells us the sun of the dawn, the bright morning star, shining one. Some different translations tell us in the CEB, how you fallen from heaven, morning star, son of dawn, NKJV, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, NLT, how you are fallen from heaven, O shining star, son of the morning, OJB, how art thou fallen from Shemayim, O Hillel, Ben Shakar, bright one of the dawn, day star, Lucifer, WEB. How you have fallen from heaven, shining one, son of the dawn. EHV, how you have fallen from heaven, you bright morning star, son of the dawn. So if Jesus is a bright morning star and the Satan is a bright morning star, what is going on? If we continue with the bright morning star, Revelation 22 and 16 again, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. A stir, 792 in the strong, star, 2986, Lampros, shining, magnificent, bright, splendid, 4407, Proenos, morning from Proai, pertaining to the dawn. So everything that's applied to Lucifer and Isaiah 14, 12, if that's the Satan, you could also apply it to Jesus in the New Testament. The morning star is now Christ. Ellicott's commentary for English readers. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? The word for Lucifer is literally the shining one, the planet Venus, the morning star, the son of the dawn, as the symbol of the Babylonian power, which was so closely identified with astrology. So now when you go and read Isaiah 14, apply the astrological approach. Lucifer etymologically gives the same meaning and is used by Latin poets to bull I, 10, and 62. For Venus, as an equivalent for the phosphorus of the Greeks, the use of the word, however, in medieval Latin as a name of Satan, whose fall was supposed to be shallowed forth in this and the following verse, makes its selection here singularly unfortunate. Few English readers realize the fact that it is the king of Babylon and not the devil who was addressed as Lucifer. While this has been the history of the Latin word, its Greek and English equivalents have risen to a higher place and the morning star has become a name of the Christ. Revelation 22 and 16. How many morning stars are there? Job 38 and 7. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. In the Strong's 3556, the stars. Star, stargazer. 1242, morning, day, early, morning, morrow from 1242 in the Strong's. How many sons of God are there? Exodus 4 and 22, then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. Isaiah 43 and 6, I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Luke 4 and 3, and the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. Now, the New Testament makes it seem like there is only one Son of God known as Jesus. 1 John 3 and 8. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So, again, we're led to believe in the New Testament that Jesus is the only Son of God. But, as I read in Job 38 and 7, 
all the sons of God shouted for joy. In conclusion, the Satan is not a physical snake. The first great dragon was Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Michael and other angels deal with the dragon in Revelation, not Jesus. Jesus does not do anything to Satan before or after his death and says he himself was finished with his work he was given to do. In conclusion, Ezekiel and Isaiah are not about Satan. The Satan is not the source of evil. There is more than one son of God and more than one morning star. Lucifer is not the Satan. Spirits from heaven are sent to lie to prophets. The Most High deceives false prophets. We are tested daily by God despite what James 1.13 tells us. As in all my books, I cover much more information than I do in this PowerPoint. The False Fulfillment Citation Series, books 1 through 10, are dedicated to the false fulfillment citations and teachings found in the New Testament. These books are available in the Kindle and paperback formats at www.amazon.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Davon Mays. Thank you.